Good day, everyone, and welcome to Saab's second quarter and first half year results presentation. I'm Merton Kaplan, Head of Investor Relations. And uh, with me today, I have our CEO, Mikael Johansson, and CFO, Acting CFO, Thomas Hendel. So before we start the presentation, uh, I would like to remind you that we have our, uh, we have a Q&A uh, afterwards where you can, uh, uh, we'll take questions from the audience, both from the teleconference and also take your questions that you post online. So yes, you can, during the presentation, post the questions uh, through our IR website and we'll try to answer those questions uh, afterwards. So with that, I'll hand over to you, Miguel. Thank you so much, Marathon, and welcome and thank you for joining us today. I'll walk you through the, uh, the Q2 report and also the first half year of 2020. Uh, I must say it's still unusual times. I guess this quarter has been one full quarter of the, the full effect of the COVID-19 that has been in play. And I will come back to comment about uh, how that has affected Saab as well. But let's look at some uh, of the highlights uh, for the first half year then. I think I'm really proud of the, the order intake situation. I think we had a really strong uh, first half year with a 45% increase in order intake. And also for the second quarter was a really strong quarter with 76 or 77% increase compared to the second quarter last year. The, uh, the growth of the small orders have continued, which uh, shows that we have a high activity in the marketplace and we are able to finalize a lot of contracts uh, that we initiated before the COVID-19 started. Also in the, on the growth side, we had a strong quarter. The, uh, we have a 5% growth compared to the second quarter 2019. And five out of six business areas showed growth. We've had effects on, on the civilian side of the, of the uh, operations, and I will uh, come back to that in, in a second. Uh, we uh, had solid performance. Uh, we have a earnings development which is absolutely in line with last year, and uh, also for the second quarter that was in line with, with the second quarter last year. I think we have had the defense uh, contributing positively, compensating for the problems we've seen on the civilian side. And on the cost reduction side, of course, we have been working a lot to mitigating the effects on the civilian side where we had to reduce our activity due to the, the airline, not the airline industry, but the industry working with the aircraft deliveries, which we are affected from. Uh, and we are mitigating the cost situation on that side. But also the OPEX side of costs have been reduced uh, considerably during the second quarter. And uh, since we have grown, we have, of course, then been able to continue our execution of the major programs according to plan, uh, which is really, really important to us. But also when it comes to the cash flow and payments, uh, those programs are essential to us. So a few things on the on the execution side. I'd like to mention uh, our delivery of the first Global Eye to UAE in April. A very strong milestone, which uh, involved uh, sort of an, uh, a new way of delivering uh, a system since we couldn't actually perform the tests in country unless we had our personnel in quarantine for a couple of weeks. We had a fantastic team doing that, staying in quarantine and then doing the tests for a week and then being able to perform that milestone, which is also connected then, of course, to payments. We have been flying our new technology on the radar side and done a number of air trials uh, on, the, on the Gripen CD, uh, which is the absolutely state-of-the-art uh, electronic steered antenna technology. Uh, and that is now ready to be implemented in, in future platforms and also, of course, upgrades for, for the CD platform. We have done tests on the very important lightweight torpedo boat from a Gotland class submarine, but also from a Vispe Corvette. And we, we have checked a number of things now, and that is go, going according to plan. And we have two important contracts with Sweden and Finland regarding, regarding that lightweight torpedo. 
And uh, you read a lot of uh, the situation in Brazil, but uh, actually we have been continuing our activities according to plan in Brazil as well. And we have now started the production of essential parts of the fighter grip and E and the dual seat, the F version in Brazil, the forward fuselage, the uh, the uh, the aft fuselage, the, the tail cone, and uh, some parts of the wings as well. So that is up and running and uh, will be an essential production site for us going forward. Um, one extremely important thing that we have completed now during the second quarter is the divestment of the, our shares in, in our joint venture in the U.S. on the 3D mapping technology with the Riken company. That was something we entered into in 2015, and uh, we have now exited and capitalized on that technology development, uh, well, in a market that we couldn't access, but we have capitalized on that. And still, we, we, we have the technology in our house to continue our, on our ex- applications on the defense side. So that is a big achievement, I think. And then we have an important program on the combat air system side in the UK, our relationship with UK industry and uh, under the MOU between Sweden and UK. And that is moving ahead uh, really well despite COVID-19 and and restrictions in traveling. And we will now enter into a situation where we will discuss a trilateral partnership uh, with the Italian industry as well. So it's been an intensive uh, first half year, an intensive quarter, which I'm really, really pleased with. Looking at COVID-19, then, to give you some updates on that, I I sort of alluded to that. We have had limited impact on the defense side, I I must say. We have all the sites in Sweden more or less up and running according to normal standards. Our employees have been doing a tremendous job keeping our operations up and running. Of course, we have followed all the all the recommendations and guidelines and restrictions that our authorities have provided, and the health of our personnel is the primary thing to work with, of course, but that has been going really, really well. We have had sites outside Sweden under complete lockdown. For example, Germany and South Africa was out for weeks on the defense side, uh, but many other Sites have been working according to plan. So we have been able to continue to work on our major programs and deliver, as I said. On the civilian side of our business, which is roughly 15% of SOB's revenue, especially related to aviation industry, our aerostructures organization in Linköping, and also our systems on on the, what we call that traffic management systems for airports and avi- navigation service providers. Those have been affected uh, dramatically. And as you can see in our numbers, our business area IPS have been uh, affected a lot. We are now, now taking uh, mitigating activities, of course, to make sure that we can uh, reduce our cost situation in those areas and essentially move personnel from the civilian side into the defense side and, uh, and, and sort of lower the number of consultants uh, for, from external companies that we have in the organization. So we try to mitigate it that way. Um, we are working hard on the supply chain side of things. Uh, we are not just in time type of company, as you know. We have substantial stock uh, to work sort of short term with our major programs, but we have to make sure that uh, they are up and running to deliver to us for, for years to come. So this is a very complex materia and uh, some companies are of course up and running again uh, reasonably well, others having problems in different parts of the world and we have a global supply chain. So this is a key thing to work with for us going forward. We have worked a lot of course with the um, financial flexibility uh, during the quarter and uh, we, we have a strong financial situation now with the credits we have available and also cash. So, uh, and also we, as you know, we, we the, the annual general meeting decided not to uh, to, to do a dividend uh, uh, as planned uh, for, for, this, uh, for this year. And uh, that is uh, something also affecting our financial flexibility, of course. So we're doing a lot of mitigating actions, uh, but generally speaking, we have been doing quite well, uh, apart from the civilian side. Some market highlights. 
Uh, well, I would say that uh, I haven't seen any signs of that our customers are refraining from continuing their procurement programs and acquisition programs. Uh, and that is also shown through our strong uh, order intake situation. They, we have concluded contracts and, and have a good order intake. Many of these things were, of course, initiated before COVID-19. And uh, fortunately, we have a strong marketing organization and, and many own employees in many different countries around the world that can continue to have interaction with our customers. Uh, that has led to the order intake. Uh, business development is a little bit more difficult, of course, but we're doing that as well as far as possible. Uh, it's hard to predict how things will go, but I can't see any changes in the marketplace in terms of that uh, countries will uh, avoid continuing with uh, protecting their societies and ha protecting their countries. Uh, and the geopolitical situation is, is not going really in the right direction. It's actually becoming a bit worse during the COVID-19. So I see uh, still our prospects being extremely valid going forward. Uh, but we have seen commercial market activity, of course, on the airline side have, uh, have dramatically been reduced, of course. But that is a limited part of Saab. A number of good things have happened during the quarter. We've signed a new airborne early warning contract, uh, a big one, and that is important to us. We've had, we have framework contracts for the shoulder weapons and support weapons side, both in the U.S. and in other countries, and that has been successful to us. And we announced yesterday that we had a new contract from the U.S., almost a billion Swedish, 930 million, uh, which is uh, fantastic. And that framework contract is 4.5 billion in total, and this was the second lot that was ordered from that. We've also had a couple of important support contracts in Sweden, both for the Gripen and but also to the extension of, of the training aircraft SK-60 that will now continue to be in operations until 2025. And uh, we have also had good contracts in the U.S. being a country that actually moved things forward a bit to support uh, the defense industry in that country. So we've had not unexpected but earlier radar orders than, than what we thought would happen during the quarter. That is uh, really good. And yesterday we also announced another contract on the airborne early warning side, the, the support contract for the Global Eye in UAE. That will be registered now in, in Q3 and not in, in the second quarter, but that is also a big win to us. So uh, in sort of summarizing what this means in numbers, then looking at the first half year to start with, uh, really good order bookings. Uh, 45% um, up, as you said, and, and the sales is in line with the first half, uh, uh, 2019, and also the operating income is in line with the first half. So the, the first quarter this year was a little bit down, but the second quarter is, uh, is a bit up, and all in all, we came to sort of the same level as 2019, despite the, the sort of the effects of, of COVID-19. And uh, operational cash flow has improved uh, dramatically, as I was commenting also after the Q1. We, we, we were seeing sort of an improvement also in Q2, which we have seen. Uh, now, we will go into a little bit more detail to clarify exactly how the underlying cash flow looks like in a minute. If we then continue to the quarterly development, uh, this is a very strong quarter. Um, from from the revenue side, I would say it's uh, one of the best ever for Saab, if not the best. Uh, and also when it comes to order bookings, an extremely strong quarter. And that is the same for the operating income. Operational cash flow, uh, a big uh, shift now to a positive $1.8 billion. Uh, positive operational cash flow. That has, however, been affected by the deferral of, of tax and social fees that's been available for us uh, from, from the Swedish government. Uh, but even with exclusion of that, we have a 600 million positive operational cash flow for the second quarter. I will reiterate that uh, 
even if we have said again that we we will not give an outlook for 2020, we we stick by our judgment that we made after the Q1. It's difficult to predict uh, again the effects of the COVID-19 in in different countries and markets, and, and the supply chain specifically is something you have to work with uh, in a meticulous way now going forward. Uh, but we do stick by our long-term financial targets of 5% organic growth and, and 10% uh, operating margin, definitely. And our strategy remains. Uh, it's built upon a number of, of uh, perspectives uh, where our employees is the most important one, of course. But when it comes to our portfolio, I think uh, one development that we have done now is then to divest uh, our shares on the RICON side, uh, which is about portfolio management, of course, but also we continue to make sure that everything we do on the portfolio side is connected to our core areas going forward. So that initiatives in taking decisions on what is actually core to us continues, uh, con- continues as well. On the international expansion side in the marketplace, the strategic partnerships on the Future combat air system is really important to us, and we're taking new steps in that direction now when the the FCAS project together with the UK is intensifying. We have also then, as I said, started our market footprint to a larger extent in Brazil with our production up and running now in Brazil going forward. Uh, Automation digitalization is absolutely key to us. We work that every day, a new technology will uh, will uh, will mean a lot to our core systems and core areas going forward and uh, we are on our toes investing in these areas continuously to make sure that we can do things with our core systems in a new way using new technology so um, I just wanted to reiterate that uh, this strategy is in place and we have lots of initiatives following our strategy pushing forward and uh, we stick by our long-term financial targets. And uh, with that, I think I will hand over to our acting CFO, Thomas Hendel. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Let's go into more details on the financials. Um, uh, we had a solid performance in the defense-related business uh, uh, for the first half, especially the second quarter, as Michael has said, and that is, of course, the majority of the business. Um, we had a good order intake in Q2, 14.1 billion almost, uh, compared to the 9.7 for the first half, which is the 45%. Uh, the, also, we normally monitor very much and follow up the small orders, and now we have 9% up uh, for the half year versus the half year last year, and it's also in second quarter as such, is 14% up, actually, so it's very good. Uh, we have a sales which is very much in line with last year, uh, despite the drop in, in the IPS business, uh, i.e. the civil business, and we have the organic growth in the second quarter of, of, of 5%. Uh, and then we have uh, stable earnings uh, and uh, bo- in the both quarters and so for the half year, coming from the positive volume effect in the defense side, but also impact from cost reduction actions uh, that also Michael mentioned, uh, and that is all, both in the cost of goods sold area and also OPEX. Uh, we have an improved cash flow in the second quarter, and I will come back to that in a minute in more details for the analysis. Uh, we have a strong financial position. We acted uh, early, uh, end Q1 uh, and, and early Q2, to secure the li- liquidity in the light of the COVID-19 uh, situation. Uh, and also that we signed, as you might remember, an extra revolving credit facility also around that timing. Uh, backlog duration, which is a, a KPI that we closely monitor, and it's very important for us, of course. Uh, we have to execute the rest of the year, 15.6 billion, to add to the, the first halves of sales. And then we have also, as you see, starting to strengthen our backlog now for 2021. Uh, so that is uh, also going to plan. Order size distribution, we've already talked about that, but what I wanted to point out with this slide this time is actually that we are now approaching 
the 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 the, uh, the book to bill ratio one as you see and that is quite some time since we were close to the one on the book and bill ratio order bookings by business area uh, the once again the strong growth uh, encouraging that we increase the or the volume both on small and large orders and uh, the growth is very much driven by dynamics surveillance and support and services ba Sales, uh, stable volumes year over year, uh, stronger Q2, uh, uh, 5% up in Q2, in five, and that is actually five out of six business areas that shows growth in the second quarter. High activity level uh, in, from our backlog uh, and also encouraging to see what we have said earlier here that dynamics is starting to pick up in their deliveries, which is very important for us in the second quarter. And then IPS, there we see the, the downturns, starting to see that even if Combatech made uh, a good performance at the end of Q2. Operating income, uh, very much affected now. IPS is very obvious in this slide. Uh, strong improvement in dynamics and surveillance. Uh, and uh, also that we still, uh, we need to mention aeronautics and supporter services at a high level, stable level according to plan. And also, we have seen, in spite of it still on a low level, but we have productivity measures implemented in COCOMS and where we also see the starting to give effect. Cash flow. Uh, yeah, uh, we are improving. We have improved cash generation. We had a good collection in the quarter, mainly from uh, meeting payment milestones and deliveries in our major programs. Uh, we have then lower levels of working capital and now starting to see the POC receivables slash contract assets starting to decrease, as we have mentioned uh, quite some time uh, now. Uh, then, then we have these, let's say, one-time positive effect from the deferrals that uh, Michael mentioned. Uh, continued investments on a pretty high level on both fixed assets and capitalized R&D uh, investments. Uh, which is according to plan, of course. Uh, and then further deliveries are planned for 2020, which is a key for us to generate cash flow. Uh, and we reconfirm uh, that we have a continued ambition to ne generate positive operational cash flow for 2020. And here I like to stress that this is without any one-off effects from the deferrals, that we still reconfirm our continued ambition on the operational cash flow side. Should also mention that we, the cash from the RICON divestment was actually received after the Q2 closing about 1 billion sec. Uh, the net debt situation is uh, pretty much stable, uh, basically reflecting the free cash flow for the first half year. Uh, and we have, uh, and the net debt of 7.4 billion, you should, then you, we should see that we have out of that the net pension obligation is actually 4.8 billion out of this 7.4, which is Important information. Uh, the equity asset ratio is strong, 36.2%, uh, which is actually one of our long term targets as well to be ahead of the 30% equity ratio. And then we have an improved cash situation now where we have the 10 billion on unutilized uh, revolving credit facilities and uh, at the, when we uh, end, of, end of Q2 we also had uh, cash on uh, about 6.3%. Billion. So finally, uh, focus, like always, execution deliver of projects is key for us. Uh, we need to secure targeted orders in certain areas. Uh, continue to pro the productivity measures and manage cost and growth, and the cash flow generation, uh, mainly from meeting the payment milestones in the large programs, but also increased deliveries in our product business. So by that, I think I'll leave over to Michael. Thank you very much. Let's thank you both of you, Mikael and Thomas. So now we are ready to open up the floor for questions and do some answers. And uh, I would like to actually start, uh, before I start, hand it over to the moderator, I would like to, as usual, remind you that 
for those who are going to ask questions, I recommend to ask one question at a time. And if you have more follow-up questions, please come back to the line so we can uh, we can answer those too and give everybody a chance. So uh, I think we're ready, and we give the a moderator to open up and uh, take the first questions from the teleconference. Thank you very much, Mr. Merchant. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask question, please press zero one on your telephone keypad. If you wish to withdraw your questions, you may do so by pressing zero two to cancel. There will be a brief pause while questions are being registered. So now we have the first question from Mr. Sash Tusa from Agency Partner. The floor is yours, Mr. Tusa. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I just wondered whether you could uh, talk about the timing of the uh, tax and uh, other social fees deferrals. Clearly, that's a tremendous benefit in this quarter. Uh, but I wondered when you would expect to pay those uh, because it's clearly not a, uh, you're clearly not being let off that particular uh, obligation. Is that something we should expect to see as a cash outflow uh, next year? Thank you. Well, I, I can start, uh, and maybe Thomas, you can comment in detail. But I mean, uh, I mean, the, the, the rules for that is that uh, the, the the first that we have been entitled to use for this quarter can can then be paid back in, in, in a year's time. Uh, but it's important, and exactly when we will do that, I will not comment upon, but it's important to state what Thomas just said, that we will absolutely have the ambition to generate a positive cash flow without sort of taking that into account, having these deferrals this year. So that is as far as I would go right now. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Sash. you very much. Next, we have a question from Mr. Douglas. The floor is yours now. Hello, gentlemen. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, question from my side. I wanted to, you already mentioned Brazil, but uh, can you give us an update on the other large programs that are running, please? Well, I think uh, if you start with the Gripen side, we, we're doing really well. We haven't sort of said that much about that, but we have now started to fly another aircraft uh, during this quarter, and the program is running well. Um, now we're adding sort of tactical functionality to the program, and uh, we are going to deliver the first aircraft to Brazil uh, this year um, uh, into Brazil, and then they will continue to get a few aircrafts next year, and also the Swedish deliveries will start. So I'm really pleased with that. Uh, the Global Eye program has been running absolutely according to plan, uh, and uh, we have achieved our milestones, as we've mentioned. Um, we have the the T7, the training aircraft in the, in the, in the, together with Boeing in the U.S., uh, I would say that uh, that so-called industrialization phase that is ongoing will now lead to the first delivery of our uh, aft uh, fuselage part to the U.S. Uh, during the fall. And then uh, from the end of next year, we will start sort of doing outputs from our production facility in West Lafayette, Indiana, also going really well. And the construction is, is going on according to plan. So I've, I've seen a few pictures. I can't travel right now, but I've seen pictures of walls and roofs and, and the inside of the building, at least. Uh, Apart from that, we have uh, the Squadron 2020, the command and control and the sensor side with the Finnish uh, Navy, also running according to plan in a very good way. So I would say program after program, and I think the quarter shows that, uh, has been running according to plan, and we have met our milestones. And, and uh, the A26 yeah, yeah, of course, I didn't avoid that on purpose. No, I mean, A26 is, is, is a program that is going now from, from development into industrialization and production and uh, activities in production have increased dramatically during the quarter. I've visited twice myself now and, and it's really looking really well. We're not pleased with the profitability of Saab Cockums and and the, the new management have initiated a number of activities to, to, to improve that. And we start seeing effects now uh, in a very positive way, I must say, uh, during this, this quarter. And you might 
know as well that, that the defense forces have taken delivery of, of the first Gotland class uh, submarine during the quarter as well. So we, we've delivered well on that as well. Okay, thank you. I'll get back into the queue. Thank you, Douglas. Thank you very much. Next, we have uh, Miss Aneska. The floor is yours, Miss Aneska. Hi, uh, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, a question from me. Uh, and I missed the beginning of the presentation, so apologies if you touched upon that. Uh, regarding the um, order momentum, you have seen quite good order intake um, in, in the past quarter. Uh, what is your outlook for, for the rest of the year, how we're doing? Do you see any hesitance at governments uh, with regards to spending on defense uh, in an environment where they need to put some money on kicking, kick-starting the economies? So, so starting with that. Now, as I said, I think I haven't seen any signals or heard any signals on that they will avoid continuing with the the acquisition programs uh, with the customers that we are uh, approaching. Uh, on the contrary, some customers are actually moving things forward in some countries. Uh, and uh, so I, I think uh, the marketplace is still very active. I mean, there is a slight problem getting face time with the customers, of course. So that's why it's so important to have people... Uh, at, at sites, so to say, internationally to work with them. Uh, it's, it's a bit frustrating not being able to travel the same way as, as usual from, from our main hubs. But I would say that countries seems to be focusing on protecting their societies and, and protecting their countries and continuing with the, with the programs that we've seen. So we have many prospects uh, still to work with during the remaining part of the year and going forward. And we have large campaigns as well, like the Gripen campaigns in Finland and Canada, and also hopefully continuing with the, the Gripen in Brazil. So the market activity is, is really high. I can't see any signs of, of that sort of going in the wrong direction. And just to follow up, you, you signed the support deal uh, with United Arab Emirates uh, for Global Eye. Is it a sign that uh, you're also progressing when it comes to the, uh, their intention to buy new equipment? We are continuing our discussions on that, and they're going in the right direction. Uh, um, on, the, on, on sort of the additional aircrafts, yes. Uh, that, and I hope, hopefully we will be able to conclude that, but I won't sort of soon, but I won't predict any specific date or month, but they're definitely in play. Uh, the support contract is an obvious thing, of course. We have started our deliveries. Uh, the first aircraft is in country. The, the next one is imminent. So they need a support uh, setup, of course, in UAE. So that is, that is connected to the deliveries we're making now to have the availability of the aircraft uh, every day to fly it. So uh, it, it's been sort of a tough negotiation, of course, but uh, it's something that they needed. So I'm pleased that we have concluded that now. All right, understand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have a question for Mr. Raphael. The floor to you, Mr. Raphael. Yes. Uh, hi. Good morning. I hope you can hear me. Um, yeah, a question regarding cost reductions. You mentioned that you have uh, done this during the quarter. Can you say something about how much you have reduced the costs? Uh, summarize what you have done and. Uh, how much is temporary and how much that could be more lasting? Thanks. I can answer, start to answer it at least, Mike. <laughs> uh, uh, we have, uh, I mean, we, we see diff basically two areas of our cost reductions. One is obvious, that is to try to compensate the volume decline in, in the civil business and the IPS. And that is more to balance the, obviously, volume cost. The other one is, of course, that we have both temporary, as you, you said, Michael, and uh, sustainable sa cost savings in the OPEX area. Uh, we have a low activity level now on the market side. That is one of the maybe at least somewhat temporary effects. But we have also worked, of course, with our structure and our corporate cost uh, or overhead as well. So... I would say these are the – one is to compensate volume, the other ones is to try to increase efficiency. And I, and I don't mention any specific numbers on, on, on the reduction. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Perfect. 
Thank you very much. Next, we have uh, Mr. Douglas for his question. Your question, sir. Hello again. Um, Follow-up question from my side. I wanted to uh, focus on dynamics. Um, I wanted to understand if there were any COVID-19 issues weighing on profitability in the quarter, such as uh, potential delivery issues. I clearly see that margins are very strong, and I just wanted to understand if they could have been even stronger in the quarter, especially now that the backlog is, is so solid, which sort of indicates a strong H2. Thanks. Well, uh, I can comment on that. I mean, Dynamics is in a very sort of much in a growth uh, situation, uh, as you know, and uh, we are sort of boosting our production capability now to to manage all the contracts that we have received. COVID-19 impact, well, there are impacts in a way that some customers will not allow sort of a a digital uh, final test sort of procedure and some customers will what i mean is that we we've tried to sort of implement a new way of delivering things by having either support from the swedish authorities witnessing our our test in sweden and then the customer will accept that and we can ship and that is uh, and we broadcast it sort of live uh, that has been accepted by many customers, but not all. So, yes, there, there would could have been sort of higher deliveries, yes. Thank you, Mikael. Very, very clear. All right. Thank you, thank you. Douglas. Moderator, I have uh, – we received a couple of questions uh, from the web, so do you allow me to take them now, please? Yes, please. Thank yes. you. Please so proceed, have... Mr. Merton. Thank you. So we had some interesting questions also from the website, both from investors and, and analysts. So, and I would just go a few of them from uh, from the rate of order here that we received them. I think here we have David here from uh, Bank of America. He wants to confirm that uh, you're, you're targeting your ambition of positive free cash flow for 2020. And I think we partly answered that question, right? Do you want to add? Yeah, we, we definitely confirmed or reconfirmed the ambition on operational cash flow, but even as, the def- as we define a classified free cash flow, the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. And he would actually also want to understand a bit more the, uh, the, the factoring of receivables um, that we've done. Are we, are we planning to do that also uh, going forward? That's the, the question. To use the, the receivables. Rece- yeah. The receivable program. Yeah. I mean, we have used it uh, in in some of the quarters uh, from a cash planning point of view, and I I wouldn't say that we should totally avoid it, but our assessment is that we, for for the moment, we we were not utilizing it. And maybe also a question to you, Mikael, here about uh, the supply chain that we mentioned, you know, about the risks. Um, What's the main pressure so far that you've seen um, from operational perspective? Well, I think, uh, as I was trying to explain, I think um, we are not a just-in-time type of company, so it might not be that it's absolutely here and now that we don't have the inflow of certain components or goods. It's more sort of related to a bit more long-term, could be sort of two to three years from now. So we're monitoring whether all the players will come back uh, as sort of suppliers, because we do see that some are up and running to 25, 50%, and, and the, backlog, the backlog that they have from many customers uh, from their side is quite high. Um, and uh, so we might have to sort of find other suppliers sometimes or, or work with them to make sure that they can deliver according to plan. Uh, so we take all kinds of initiatives to make sure that that will also be secured for the future. Um, but it's different in different countries. Mm. I mean, we had weeks of, of, of sort of complete lockdowns where companies may not even have answered the phone, so to say. Mm. Uh, but now most of them are actually up and running again to some extent. That's good to hear. That's very good. Um, we have a different type of question and more related to, to Gripen here maybe. But uh, we have one person here from uh, Finland, it looks like. Are you expecting... Colombia to make fighter selection by the end of this year? Do we have an answer to that? Uh, it's difficult to, to answer that question. In a, we, we're following the process. We have offered things. We, have, we are in comms with them. Um, they have to make, make sort of uh, political decisions to go ahead and uh, uh, they, they, they review now different proposals. 
from sort of formality perspective, they've set up a rather quick process that would sort of could lead to a decision before the end of the year this year. Mm. But whether that will with the, will they be able to stick to that? That's really difficult to say. Mm. But we are in the game, absolutely. Mm. Thank you. We have a, a private investor here from uh, Germany who is wondering how ha- how happy is the UAE uh, customer with the Global Eye? Uh, and, and what's the status of the follow-up contract? Can we add something to that? But obviously, I would say the customer is very happy, and that's absolutely true. I mean, it's been a successful delivery, and it is, it is a fantastic capability, a surveillance capability. So I, we're really pleased with that. And uh, we just concluded the support contract on that. And we, as I said, we are in discussions continuously on the, the next sort of aircraft that they announced in November that they will, they will acquire. So that is still absolutely in play. Okay, good to hear. Um, Björn Janasson here from Danske is ask, ask, sent a post here asking what are the main COVID-19 risks for you and, and what's the impact from COVID-19 during Q2? Uh, he says he missed the first part of the presentation. But. As I said, definitely, obviously, it is uh, the impact on, on, uh, or, on our aerostructures activities where the, the sort of production rates have been reduced dramatically because the the requirements from the aircraft industry has uh, gone down uh, dramatically. Um, so that is obviously the biggest one, and it's difficult to predict when things will get back to normality from the airline side, as you've seen. I can't do any other prediction than what I read, and it will take probably years before we see sort of the same level of, of production rates from from the big aircraft uh, companies. Uh, then, then, so that's an area. And then we've had, of course, traffic management, air traffic management systems, where we deliver command and control systems to the the air navigation service providers and airports uh, to manage the air traffic uh, in the vicinity of the airport to optimize that. And that has also been affected rather dramatically. So that's the most obvious thing. But also, of course, on in the defense side, which is not really visible now since other parts of the defense side have been quite successful. We've had complete lockdowns of our operations in South Africa and in Germany uh, for weeks uh, during the second quarter. So there are effects also in mm. in the defense side. I cannot predict. I don't have the crystal ball. Will there be second waves in some countries? Will there be eruptions of, of, of um, infections again, which will require countries to take... Um, initiatives will which will affect sort of lockdown will we see lockdowns again hard to predict i can't judge but we we look upon sort of the civilian part supply chain is critically important as well around the world those are the main things we work with mm. so perfect that's a good question I, i'm going to take the one more question here that we have very interesting questions from the web and then i'll leave uh, leave the floor back to you to the moderator i have one uh, investor here from London, uh, wondering about the aeronautical di- division's um, performance in the quarter and especially highlighting, um, you know, whether the campaigns that we work on and, and associated costs with that. Uh, so his question is, are there any late uh, stage negotiations uh, going uh, to highlight within aeronautics? Well, I mentioned the... Uh Campaigns, uh, the most obvious ones are, of course, the, um, the, the Finnish campaign and, and the Canada campaign. Uh, and there are uh, activities all the time. We have uh, done a tremendous effort now to hand in a very comprehensive uh, we will hand in a very comprehensive offer to Canada, uh, and that that takes a lot of sort of resources and and, and cost uh, to do that. So the, mar- the the market activity and the market cost is quite high connected to these campaigns. But uh, either you're in or, or you're out. You can't do it halfway. So when we go into campaign, we we do it to win, of course. So we push ahead really hard on these ones. Um, the operations as such is going. A- Exactly according to plan, as I, as I mentioned before. Very good. Thank you, Mikael. Do we have more questions from uh, from the line on the teleconference? Yes, we do, Mr. Merchant. Can I just uh, pass over the floor to Mr. Sash Tusa to ask your question? Mr. Tusa, please. 
Um, thank you. So d just one follow on. Uh, I wondered whether you could say what you intended to do with the cash that you will receive from the sale of the Vricon shares. Uh, it, it, should we just assume that that will go to reduction of debt or is, uh, do you have any specific uh, intentions with regard to that cash? I wouldn't comment in detail on that. I mean, as you know, our strategy is about uh, investing in, in, in technologies that will be important for us going forward in our core areas. We will continue to do that. We are a company that will continuously have a high level. We also have pointed out a few strategic countries that where we would like to increase our footprint. So that could also be alternatives to either grow organically or, as we always do, look at sort of uh, acquisitions to strengthen ourselves in our strategic countries. But I won't pinpoint a specific thing, but it's good to have this cash coming in to strengthen our financial flexibility and to support our strategy. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next question we have for Ms. Aneska. Ms. Aneska, your question, please. Yeah, just a housekeeping question. What is the reason for the relatively low corporate cost in the quarter? And what are your expectations going forward? And also, whether you had any support from the governmental aid in the PNL EBIT as well? Thanks. Okay, uh, the corporate, uh, you, you're right. In the quarter, we have a fairly low negative result from the, from the corporate segment, and that is from two areas. One is the, 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 the lower cost level than, than we, the, the, yeah, the lower cost level, as I mentioned. The other one is also that we, in the closing now, had some group consolidation entries that went, let's say, to the, to, to, in the right way this time, so it's it's uh, it's not a sustainable effect. You sh you shouldn't extrapolate this quarter from a stewardship point of view. This is too too low, so it's this this is uh, a little bit better than it you should extrapolate on from the stewardship point of view. And no, we haven't had any P and L effects from any any uh, uh, initiatives from uh, from um, government supported initiatives now. On the PNL. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much. Since there are no further questions at this time, I would like to hand over back to Mr. Merton for any additional remarks. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have uh, we have one more question here. I saw from Ron Investor. Maybe we can uh, clarify that too. Um, He's asking here, does there need to be a plan to align the cost in, in EPS division uh, with the future demand that, that you mentioned before in your presentation? If there is a plan? Yeah. Oh, of course, there is absolutely uh, a plan to uh, mitigate the cost situation in, in IPS as a whole, in, in all the different businesses going ahead. So uh, <clears throat> that, that's a very important plan that we've started to execute now, and, and that will continue during 2020. I think with that, we've covered uh, all of the questions from the teleconference and also from the website, so we thank you a lot. Um, do you have any final remarks that you would like to say? Um, I'd just like to yeah. thank you for uh, listening in and for all the good questions. Uh, I can just assure you that Saab will continue to push forward according to our strategy, and we have lots of initiatives going. And I look forward to update you on that after the Q3 report, of course, how we are performing. And um, I just wish you a fantastic summer then and, and stay safe out there. Thank you. Thank you.